Hey everyone, this video is going to be my wine build guide, specifically Cabernet wine, but with some tweaking you could also make Chardonnay or Pinot Noir wine. The only NFT that will be used is one Express Depot, but it is not required for this build to work. And I just want to emphasize that this is the first wine build that I have ever made and practiced. It's a decent layout that produces about 70 Cabernet wine per hour but it is by no means the best build. This guide is intended to help beginners make a decent wine build from the start. You are more than welcome to tweak it as you see fit and I encourage you to improve upon it to achieve a higher production rate. This build requires a mountain edge as you will need mines in order to get the materials necessary to craft wine. You will also need either a desert biome or have an edge be a desert biome in order to have sand mines produce silica at the fastest rate, which is the material used for wine bottles. Um, I use an east orientation desert tile in order to make this build as it takes advantage of the location of the oil seat, but it is not necessary to do so. Preferably, you will want a location close to a city that will allow you to sell goods using only one gasoline per cell. But this guide will work if you are using two gasoline per cell. This build took me a little over a day to complete with the setup I used. Wine is a rather tricky build because you will have to balance wood and lumber very carefully or else you will not be crafting wine. So keep an eye out to make sure wood and lumber is balanced and you can control this by turning on or off a lumber mill. You could also tweak the amount of trees you have as this will affect the wood you produce as well. I've edited this video as much as I can to make it easier to watch but I do show just about everything I do until I get to the finished build. By no means do you have to watch the whole thing, so feel free to skip around if you'd like. Now this is an alternate version of this build just to show you that this wine build will work in another biome, but you will have to have a desert biome at the edge in order to keep the sand mines on green timers. And this build will work without an oil seat, but you will have to have two or three oil pumps and an additional forklift in place. If you run only two oil pumps, you need to be careful with the amount of times you sell. If you're selling too often, you will eventually run out of gasoline. So I would recommend building three oil pumps to make sure you have more than enough gasoline produced. And if you decide to do this without an oil seep, you will have to have some wind turbines built in order to generate all the energy needed to build everything. Well, without further delay, let's get right into the guide. I started my town in the desert with a mountain on the north side making it an east orientation desert because all the stuff you start with is on the east side. Auto cell was on so I sold a batch of weed which is fine. I turn off auto cell and remove weed from my list and then I turn my FPS off because you don't need to see those numbers on this video. I start by building a road and the windmill next to the fuel storage. The windmill in that spot will have a green timer since no shade is cast on it. I then delete my trade depot since I'm going to be using an express depot NFT. I check the map to see which side would have the fastest sell time and it looks like San Francisco is on the west side from my town so I plan on having my express depot facing the west side and on the corner of my town. I then build a second well as I'll be building all my ponds using these two wells. As soon as the windmill is built, turn flower production on. I made sure not to use the Gusty Winds Effect card NFT here because if you do have it, it should make the process of making flowers slightly quicker. Once the well is built, I'm building a pond to the left of my current pond. I'm going to be placing ponds in specific spots that I want them at for my end build. So keep that in mind if you have a different tile orientation. So after the pond is built, in this case we have enough passive water for the wheat, so I get rid of one of the wheat fields and place a tree farm instead, making sure it has no shade casted from the windmill or any other buildings. This will allow it to grow fast with a green timer. The tree farm still needs one water in this case, but the farmer should water it when there are no crops to harvest. 
I also build a lumberjack as I need someone to collect the wood when it's ready. The lumberjack will take the wood to the windmills when needed, otherwise it will take the wood to the witch shed for the builders to use for building other things. So we're going to be selling a couple of batches of flour to start as they will sell for a decent amount of money, but I will eventually be selling wool for more money. As soon as I get 10 flour, I place down my express depot and sell the flour. Afterwards I remove my express depot so I won't have to pay the wages for now since I'm going to have to wait for another batch of flour to sell, which takes a while at the start. Start building my second windmill, which is the last windmill I build. I also made sure there's a three tile gap so it has no shade cast on it. And afterwards I start building another pond. Now once that pond is built, my layout has enough passive water for the tree farm so I don't have to wait for the farmer to water the tree farm anymore, allowing for faster wood collection. I noticed that I need more wood to build the windmill so I make another tree farm. It won't need any additional water here but it will have a yellow timer because of the shade from the first windmill so it will take twice as long to grow. As soon as the second windmill is built, I turn on flower production for it as well. And once I collect 10 flower again, I place on my express depot and sell another batch. I leave my express depot placed now since I'll be producing flower quickly. Once I get another flower, I go to my auto sell settings and add flower to the list with a keep amount of zero, meaning as soon as I get 10 flower, it will sell automatically. Also, make sure to turn auto sell on. Then I build another pond, slowly going through the process of making all the ponds in the places I want them to be. And once I get more money, I start building another pond. After I have those ponds built and more money saved up, I build a sheep pen and a rancher house as well as place some meadows down. After they are built, I can start collecting and selling wool for more money while still continuing to sell flour. I also build a few roads in the center just to mark those roads there for later. Also I make sure to build the sheep pens in spots where they will have 5 passive water. That's why I continue to place ponds down for passive water. I noticed I needed more wheat for both the windmills to run so I placed another wheat field. I deleted the pastry that came with the map as I don't want the sheep walking all the way over there. And now that the sheep pen and rancher house are finished building, I will now start collecting wool. I also start building my second sheep pen now, then place more meadows.
Once I collect my first wool, I add it to auto sell with a keep amount of zero. Now I just wait until I make more money from selling flour and wool. As I start getting that money, I slowly build up more sheep pens and rancher houses and meadows as I see fit. Since I'm going to start building stuff more often now, I also add additional builder houses. And I also continue to build more ponds to have more passive water coverage. At this point I want to transition out of flour so once I see that I have enough to sell a batch of flour, I turn my windmills off and sell them. I will only focus on selling wool to build up cash for now. I notice that I need more wood so I start building more tree farms as I see fit. Once I sell my windmills I also get rid of my wheat fields and silo as I won't be needing those anymore. Actually you can also get rid of your farmer house, I actually forgot to do it here but I end up removing it later. After that, I start placing roads on the corner where I plan to make my industrial area with refineries and power plants for gasoline production. So I build a couple of things here. A worker house that will collect energy from the wind turbine, a pond that will have two water pumps beside it later, a lumber yard to store more wood, two wind turbines for energy, and a warehouse to store that energy in. Um, energy will be used to craft petroleum and gasoline if you need to craft it right away. Or if you're good on gasoline, then the energy will first be used to craft lumber, which will be required to build a power plant. If you're using two gasoline per delivery, you're going to have to build your refineries first and start working on your gasoline production. Otherwise, if you're good on gasoline, you can just build one power plant first. That way you will waste less time and resources on making gasoline since you have some passive energy supplied to the refineries.
once the pond is built, I build two water pumps across each other, like so. Water pumps are required for power plants and passive gas production. You will also need to build an oak tree farm to start collecting oak wood as the water pump needs 3 oak wood, so 6 oak wood total will be used for both water pumps. I also build a fuel storage in that specific spot which will be directly across from the refinery that will be making gasoline. I like doing this because it prevents the fuel storage from accidentally getting filled up with too much petroleum. I also start building both refineries but since I am good on gasoline I do not actually finish building them until after I build my first power plant. But like I said if you need to start producing gas now then now would be the time to do so. I build a lumber mill in that spot but that will be temporary as I plan to have the lumber mills elsewhere later. The reason I need that lumber mill in that spot there right now is because it's close to that warehouse with energy and because I plan to build my first power plant near that area so once built it will have two passive energy and needs to craft lumber. Um, as soon as I have three extra oak wood to spare I end up deleting the oak tree i use that oak wood later to build another water pump. You can also remove the oak tree right after your first two water pumps are built since you really won't need the oak wood for a while. And as soon as the lumber mill was built I turned lumber crafting on. A total of 11 lumber will be needed, one to build a paved road and 10 for the power plant. For now it's just a matter of continuing to expand my wool production so I can continue to rack up cash while I craft more lumber. Once I have enough money, I start building the paved road directly next to where the power plant will be built. After waiting some time, I have enough cash and materials saved up to build a power plant.
As soon as the power plant is built, then I finally finish building the refineries and turn on petroleum and gasoline crafting. The one crafting petroleum will be closest to the oil seep and will have all the crude oil, energy, and water drums it needs to craft petroleum. The one crafting gasoline will have both water drums supplied but only three of the six energy supplied. For the time being, it will collect energy from the warehouse. This will be the case until I get the second power plant built. If you're copying this build but don't have an oil seep there, you will have to place oil pumps nearby instead. The industrial worker from the worker house will collect them and take them to the fuel storage. You will also need to keep the wind turbines to continue crafting energy. Also make sure your power plants are turned off as you don't want them taking your crude oil. If you do have an oil seep there, then you can remove the wind turbines and worker house and leave the power plant turned on as it will have the two crude oil it needs passively supplied from the oil seep. The worker will craft energy and then take it to the warehouse. The lumber mill also now has energy passively supplied to it. I turned it back on as I'll need 11 more lumber for another paved road and power plant later. I also end up removing my first fuel storage but before doing so I sell a batch of gasoline so it doesn't go to waste. I suppose with that in mind you could probably sell a batch of gasoline at the start if you're only using one gasoline per sale. If you think you're confident you will make it to this point before running out of gasoline that is. Also if at any time you don't have enough wood to finish your buildings temporarily turn your lumber mill off then turn it back on after you have some wood saved up. I built some more roads and lumberjacks in that spot as I plan to have some loggers and tractors there in the future. I start building the second paved road in a spot that will allow me to have the power plant built on one side and the mine built on the other side later. I also place down roads where I plan to have them. I noticed I had too much petroleum now so I turned off petroleum crafting temporarily and I also start building 4 ponds as I wait until I have enough cash to build the second power plant. Once I have enough cash to build the second power plant, I also build another 6 ponds. These will be the last ponds I will need for this build.
Once the second power plant is built, I will have all the passive energy required for my refinery making gasoline. I also go ahead and turn my petroleum crafting back on. I also start placing a few paved roads, specifically in spots where I plan on building more power plants as I'll need plenty of energy near the mountain side as the mines will require it for their crafts. I also build a storehouse in the spot I plan to have it in my finished build. Then I continue to build roads where I plan to have them. After all that is built, I get rid of my wells as I won't need them anymore. I also get rid of my first storehouse as soon as it doesn't have any more wool in it. I don't want to waste that precious wool. I go ahead and build a water pump there where I plan to have lumber mills making lumber and a power plant on the other side facing the paved road. I start building the last sheep pens I need, but I accidentally build one in the spot that only has 4 passive water. Uh, you do not want a sheep pen there, just a meadow for now. I end up realizing this after it's built, so I remove it and replace it with a meadow later. I also clear out most of the scrubs and add a bunch more meadows and some more builder houses. If you have an oil seep, you'll notice at this point you're crafting a lot of gasoline, more than you need. You can go ahead and sell gasoline. When I recorded this, gasoline wasn't possible to auto sell, but this should be possible later. If you can add gasoline to auto sell, go ahead and add it with a keep amount of 25. This means as soon as you have 35 gasoline, it will sell a batch of 10. Now I slowly start building up mines, starting with two mines where I have paved roads and passive energy already. Once the mines are built, I start crafting iron. I realize I needed to have a water facility for the water drums before I finished building the mine, so I work on making a water facility and another warehouse. I'll also need to build back an oak tree farm to collect oak wood for the water facility and more water pumps later. I also turn off the power plant temporarily as I have plenty of energy. You will want to keep turning on and off the power plant if you're using it as your main source of energy as you don't want to fill up all your warehouses with energy. Just craft energy as you see fit for building.
As soon as I get iron, I add it to auto sell with a keep amount of zero. I will be selling both wool and iron for cash at this point. And once I have enough cash, I build my third power plant. Once I have more cash, I built the rest of the water pumps I need and place down a lumber mill in the location I plan to keep it. After the power plant and lumber mill finishes building, I get rid of my first lumber mill. I then start making more paved roads to be able to build more mines and eventually start building my fourth power plant. As my paved roads get built, I build more mines and I proceed to build my fifth power plant and an additional lumber mill, lumber yard, and warehouse. After all that, I'll have 4 mines crafting iron now, and enough cash to build my 6th and final power plant. I continue on expanding by adding more paved roads, then add more mines, and also adding more water facilities as they are needed. At this point I want to start getting to wine bottle production as those sell for higher. I end up building a forklift that will collect silica from the sand mines. I build three sand mines at the edge. Since this is a desert biome they will have green timers otherwise if you're on another biome you will need that edge to be an ocean or a desert in order to still have green craft timers on the sand mines. I also build three glass factories as those will be crafting the wine bottle. Once all of that is built, I can transition most of my mines to limestone and chromium. The first mine will continue making iron as it only has one passive energy so it would be inconvenient for it to craft other materials. I have four mines making limestone and four mines making chromium in an alternating pattern. I plan on paving all my roads so you will see that slowly happen. I have to be careful about which roads I pave at certain points as it will temporarily shut things off so be aware of that when paving roads but preferably you do want paved roads as it boosts movement speed for your workers. As soon as I get my first wine bottle, I add it to auto sell with a keep amount of zero. 
For silica, chromium, and limestone, I added to auto sell with a keep amount of two, as I always want to have two to spare in case my glass factory workers are coming to collect it. If you don't auto sell these materials, your warehouse may potentially get jammed. Once I finish paving all of my roads, I start on building loggers, which are faster versions of the lumberjacks. I also build more lumber mills as I will have three making oak barrels and three making lumber. I also build uh, the silo that I will use to store grapes in later and add more builders to help. Eventually, I also start building farm tractors, which will add logs to the grapevines and collect the grapes and bring them to the silo. I build my first winery. At this point, I'm transitioning out of wool completely. My main source of cash is now iron and wine bottles until I start making Cabernet wine. I add a lot more trees while I begin to build the Cabernet grape vines. I will need for this build. I slowly replace some of the trees for oak trees and turn on oak barrel crafting as I can also sell oak barrels for a good amount and I'll have all the ingredients necessary for Cabernet wine. I had lumber to auto sell with a keep amount of 10, but a keep amount of 5 will also work. Right here I was worried about running out of money so I was being very careful while I waited on my next wine bottle and iron sale for some spare cash before I finished building my wineries as they have high wages of 2000 per minute each. I also wanted to make sure I had materials ready for them to start crafting Cabernet wine right away. I add oak barrels to auto sell with a keep amount of 0, but I believe I eventually changed the keep amount to 2. Noticed I was getting too much wood so I temporarily removed some trees. As soon as I got my first Cabernet wine, I added it to auto sell with a keep amount of zero. I also decided to add Cabernet grapes to auto sell with a keep amount of 10, so it would only sell if the silo is full. This is temporary though as I wanted to make sure I got cash as fast as possible and I didn't have enough wineries to use up all the grapes at the time. After some time, I did build two more mines to craft more iron as it's better to overproduce iron in oak barrels than oak wood because oak wood can quickly jam your lumber yards. Was also getting rid of any spare oak wood I had. You typically don't want any oak wood in your lumber yards at this point. I work on building all the Cabernet vines I think I need. I do end up tweaking it a bit as time goes by.
After I woke up the next day, I had enough cash to begin building 5 more wineries and a couple more farm tractors. Once those wineries were built, of course I had them all start crafting Cabernet wine. At this point, most of my cash is now coming from Cabernet wine, but some of it still comes from the overflow of other materials on occasion. Once I have enough cash, I built the last three wineries I plan on having that will make 10 wineries in total. I also decided to build another forklift so I can collect silica faster uh, since I noticed I wasn't collecting it fast enough to produce the amount of wine bottles I needed. Also if you're using oil pumps you're going to want to have a second forklift already built anyways as that will be spending some time collecting the crude oil from the oil. And finally, after all that work, I made it to my finished Cabernet wine build. Well, that's all there is to it. Like I said at the beginning of this video, you're going to have to keep a close eye on your wood and lumber to make sure it's balanced. I also recommend auto selling wood with a keep amount of 40 or 50 or 60 in order to prevent it from clogging up all the lumber yards. Because if you don't have enough space for the lumber, the warehouses will get jammed with other materials and the whole operation will fail. Uh, yeah, wine is tricky like that, so just be careful. This guy took me a very long time. I would greatly appreciate it if you could like this video, leave a comment with your feedback, and subscribe if you wish to support me in making more organized content like this. If you made it this far, you're amazing. Thank you so much for watching my guide.